is just to get in touch with people Cause they think that the money gives them the power But the power is nothing if your people can get Yeah, good day to you Wonderful, wonderful day And uh, we had uh, well, quite a remarkable experience over the weekend and uh, today, you know, everybody is buzzing, everybody is still talking and it's, you know, accumulating in the air, what happened, this happened and all of that yes, Nigeria does had a, a memorable time uh, um, in uh, history and that's uh, the, the people refer to what just happened over the weekend um, as the most democratic event that Nigeria can think that they have recorded because people were more enlightened about their their, their franchise people were more enlightened about their power the, the power of their firm of their thumbs people were more enlightened that they can vote in or vote out who they want or who they do not want you know and uh, this weekend this weekend indeed was was a tremendous one and uh, we had mostly good reports and we had also some bad reports we had some um, stories of some you know shootings and killings some shootings and killings um, in some parts of the country and uh, we also had some um, you know riots and uh, um, people uprising people were complaining about some things here and there but notwithstanding we want to get your report we want to get your report of uh, how the election went around your area how it was for you and uh, um, also for things that you heard okay so um in the studio today i'm not alone i'm never alone when it comes to this program issues affecting i have here uh, uh guests and friends in the studio colleagues i have lucky i have told you and i also have femi femi, femi um yes femi okashio um he he was a significant part of the elections i would i would not uh, deny that and uh, we are going to be talking about all of that uh, today. We're going to be talking about what happened over the weekend and how it was around you. And um, people had major complaints, the late arrivals of the P of the uh, um, of the INEC officials. You know, people had problems with the card readers. The card reader was the major problem around in, I would say, all all poll, polling units that I went to and all polling units that I heard of the card reader was a major major problem so we're going to be talking about that today and uh, don't go nowhere stay tuned to Radio Global this is Issues Affecting All the years that you and I have spent together It seems like you've been playing me all along So many times you ask me to put the whole of my trust in you So many times you betrayed me and played me for a fool Why don't we work together so the future will be brighter Cause it be like you and I, we didn't need each other all the time All the time Another year has come And now you want my trust once more Oh no It be like say you want to tell me Another story I can tell It be like say you want to act Another movie I can do It be like say about us Cause all they really want to do is just to get in touch with big bucks Cause they think that the money gives them the power But the power is nothing if your people cannot get quality education The power is nothing if 
Bunch of people keep dying of disease and starvation The poor is nothing If your people have no peace Oh peace The poor is nothing If your people cannot live in unity hey. See why you keep on deceiving the people My brother, my sister See why you make all these people to they fight one another Oh no Only God can judge you now only God can judge you now. Only God can judge you now. Only God can judge you now. Another year has come. And now you want my vote once more. Oh, no. If he like say they want to tell me another story, I will. If he like say, if he like say they want to act another movie, I will. If he like say. Yeah, yeah, welcome back to the program. It is issues affecting here on Radio Global, and we are talking about the elections that happened um, on uh, March 28, last Saturday, March 28, and we're talking about um, everything that has happened, the results, and um, you know, and uh, if there was the uprisings, the killings, the fighting, the shooting, you know, we also had some people um trying to some people in possession of, uh, of uh, quite a number of um, PVCs you know all the rigging and election map practices that happened there were quite a lot of stories coming up and you know being dug up you know surfacing and you know making waves around and um, first of all the day started out I would want to explain that the day started out with people walking trekking long distances from their houses to the various polling units you know so some people would register that some part of the city would have to trek all the way to where they registered to uh, um cast their votes you know it was like an endurance trek for people and i noticed that people had this patriotism to it the enlightenment about uh, uh, um, people to be involved in this year's election was really massive and and people were truly involved people went through the sick and thin you know people were standing sitting come rain come sunshine that i can say for lagos because it rained and the sun was also very hot people still stayed there and even when elections had to be pushed over, spilled over till the next day, people still turned out and it rained again on that day, people were still there. And I just want um told you, what do you what do you think is responsible for this? That Nigerians are so 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 involved in this year's election. Would you say that it was the same during the last election or, or this year is just okay, just one of those years? What's the difference? Well, I, I believe that the difference between this election and uh, every other election is because uh, this particular one has brought two major uh, uh, candidates whom uh, it's either maybe people are doing it for the reason uh, that maybe they want to spite one. Yeah, I don't want to really uh, mention names now uh, of a any candidate but I just want to say that a lot of people are really involved in this election because it's an election that Nigeria has not had before this is a particular election whereby you've had people say a lot of things you've had uh, hopes being raised up and at the end of the day a lot of them have been bashed uh, due to the bombings which Nigeria has had for some time now a lot of people are saying that okay even Jonathan he didn't do this he didn't do that a lot of people are trying to go back Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are maybe trying to uh, um, get back at him and that's the reason why they are saying okay uh, APC is my preferred um, uh, um, party, APC is my preferred uh, or Buhari is my preferred candidate and things like that. Uh, well to me I believe that's the reason why a lot of people are out to vote because and again some other set of people are out to vote because they want a better Nigeria whether this one or the other they just want a better Nigeria so that's it. Yeah, the better Nigeria. That's what everyone is seeking. That's what everyone is hoping. And um, and let's not forget that um, Nigerians were optimistic. They all came out according to time. Vehicular me movements were really, really minimized. We saw people. You know, streets were deserted because people. Some people. Uh, um, people did not go out. But I also noticed one thing. One thing was that, in as much as people went out, but 
I would not deny the fact that some people, a majority, uh, 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 um, a large number of people also stayed at home and did not even come out. You know, I went out asking, I saw people around, I said, are you not voting? Don't you have your PVC? And they said, voting. I go there so that they don't break my head. I don't know what's going to happen at the polls. You know, people were scared of, they don't know what's going to happen. People were scared of the power tussle that they believe is was going to take place at the election, uh, uh, at the polling units or the polling booths and the rest of it. People just had this uh, uh, um, premonition, I would say, by themselves concerning the elections. People didn't go out. Lucky, what would you say about that? Uh, I, I think, uh, thank you very much for that first of all, I think um, the issue of people not going out is uh, basically on account of, uh, of certain facts what we just can't disregard. First mm -hmm. of it is uh, uh, the prevention of collection of PVCs. Majority of people actually are uh, registered, okay, uh, for the, uh, but uh, they weren't able to get their PVCs. Okay. That was one restriction. Secondly, um, Electoral values or election values is always a problem in uh, in Africa, not just Nigeria. It's a major problem. People are always scared going to the public booth because certain words or certain areas are actually exclusively reserved for certain political candidates. So if you're going there as an opposition, the likelihood of you having your head smashed with <laughs> with, with with a with, with, with a bottle is extremely high. I know, right? Uh, okay. So these are the scares. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is, uh, let's say, what actually prevented so many people from going out. But I would actually deny the fact that so, that so many people in Nigeria are completely apolitical. They don't want to get themselves involved in anything politics. Mm -hmm. They feel, okay, uh, let them vote in whomever they think they want to vote in. I'm, I'm okay with that, but me going to the public vote to vote, I wouldn't do that. But I think, um, from what we've seen in this election, you know, the, the, the electoral education is really yes. improving because yes. it's improved. It, I, I was a witness of the, of the previous election in 2011. It wasn't as this massive as it is this year. Yes, the electoral that education. Year, you know, people were skeptical, people didn't have trust. No, some people didn't even know anything about the elections as I done. Absolutely, absolutely. But the, there was massive education concerning the elections, I must say. You know, campaigns all over. Campaigning this um, during this election, I think, is the biggest Nigeria has recorded. Yeah, yeah It's absolutely. the biggest Nigeria has recorded. Sure. And I think what actually prompted that was simply because people have now had this kind of trust in the system. Before, there was no trust. They believe, okay, if I'm going there to vote, my vote will be counted. Yes, okay. yes, I had that lot. Yeah. I had people, that a lot. People have been counted this time around that if you're going to the public vote, if you're going into cast your ballot, it would definitely count. Yes. I think that is one thing that's really either pressurizing people to get out there to vote. But apart from that, people are not contented with the current economic situation in Nigeria. And I think that is another reason why they truly want to go out and vote. Because let's say in 2012, basically, majorly, mm -hmm. talking about the, the removal of fuel subsidy, that would actually escape the minds of Nigerians. Yes. Our economy was on a standstill, it, it almost collapsed, okay, and people have kept on talking about that, and I think that is one thing that's going to count against the current administration, mm -hmm. quite sincerely, there were so many errors, you know, talking about policy errors, talking about uh, projects, you know, um, all of the priorities, but looking at it at all, I think the people are well educated about the electoral process and they've trusted it and that's what we've said, this massive turnout today. Yes, really massive turnout because and one thing I must applaud Nigerians for is that patience. Our patience and our perseverance even when we had problems with the card readers the card readers had problems in all the polling units i i was i i i, I was um of um uh, opportune to be at and also the ones i heard of you know the card reader the card reader the card reader you know and uh, let's not forget the fact that um, it was noted that uh, in, in most places the elections or the accredi accreditation exercises they didn't start as planned as at the 8 a.m. that was planned. You know, we had some places then coming by 10, then coming by 11. Yeah, I even heard of a place they, they came in by three. 
3 p.m. to start the accreditation. You know, some places, the different places, they didn't come on time, you know, and, uh, you know, all of these people said it was uh, um, um, attributed to logistic problems and all of that. And, but the thing is, now we're standing, Nigerians were patient. Nigerians waited. I saw the long queue. I saw how long people stood under the sun. People sat on the road. People sat under the tree. People voting with the torch. And people stood behind. People stood behind to count. You know, I had people raising their chants, counting the numbers 29, 30, 41. You know, everybody participated in the number chants. And it was full participation. Now I want to ask Femi. I want to ask Femi. Femi, Femi was part of the electoral processes when I, I would say the um, organizational um, part of it. And um, I want to ask him how were the card readers? What would be? Uh, what's your opinion on the card readers? The card reader really gave really gave Nigerians issues. I know a lot of people who are. I have reports here of people who are throwing. Uh, uh, Hell and brimstone right now on INEC concerning the card readers. So, what's your take? What's your point? What's your opinion? Or what what reports would you want to give concerning the card readers? Okay, I, I think basically about the card reader. Um, first, let me, let me um, bring it down to my own polling unit. And my my polling unit, the card reader was okay. Actually, um, when we started, mm -hmm. when the when the election started, it was. It was we had a, we, um, there was a little itch and um, I think um, that itch was sorted out and um, it was discovered that there was a little um, nylon the film yes, yes. yes. The, on, on, a on protective film, film just covering on the top that's one thing so, that's so, the some problem people, some people didn't know that that was on uh, on already on, yes on the card reader. So, um, when it was discovered, it was removed, and after that, everything the worked was well. It worked quite well. well and, and fine. That's the same report I got in all the every, all the places that I heard of. They said the protective film, the protective film, things were not reading. It wasn't reading. It wasn't spotting. It wasn't getting um, catching the fingerprints, as you one would say. Yeah, you yeah. know, and everything was spreading round. You know, and uh, everything was spreading round that people should look at the card reader as well to see yeah. if that protective film. Is it's still yeah, on it. Or removed. Yes. In my polling unit, only one woman could um, could not do a, uh, what do they call it, an accreditation. Okay. Because, um, you know, um, she was tried over and over all of her ten fingers. She washed her hands with soap, washed her hands with spirits. Wow. Washed her hands with every, she tried over and over and over and again. And, you know, it didn't work. So, but apart from her, every other person, Maybe on two, three, four trials, you get to um, accredit them, and it was quite okay. Um, my polling unit started eight thirty in the morning, and they closed one o'clock as planned. In the case for accreditation. For accreditation and everything went well by five thirty. Everybody, every, everybody, everybody was done with their accreditation yeah. as at one o'clock. Before one o'clock. Before and one o'clock. Waited till. Waited. Till you had to wait for people to come over. Exactly. Exactly. So that that was it. We're very very okay and you know um, as at five thirty six we were through with voting at like six we started counting and everybody just like you said they would they chant one two three everybody was there and everything so it was quite okay except um, for times when um, you know you had a little of threats we just come around yeah and, the um, threats is another another tread. aspect of it exactly well. But notwithstanding, the security was really, really tight. I think I want to appreciate um, the government for doing that. Security was quite reliable, at least to an extent, mm. irrespective of anything that we've heard or anything we've envisaged. Okay. Um, seeing um, a lot of armed men around you mm -hmm. at least gives you a, a rest of mind. That, okay, whatsoever happens, <laughs> I think I'm safe, except for in some places where um, safety was not so secure. So I, I think generally, generally in the long run, the election was free, it was fair, there was no chaos, there was no um, violence before, during or after the election. It was quite okay. The only issue people had was the card reader. And just for um, those who didn't, 
quickly um, recognize the film on the card reader. So yes, recognizing the film on the card reader, yeah. it, it spread around. That was like the major thing. Um, people didn't know that. People were not able to spot it. And, and let's not forget also that um, there were threats. Uh, there were threats to the lives of even the INEC officials who yeah. were there. Yeah. There were threats, you know, people were people were being summoned and uh, people, people were being uh, told to do this or I'm uh, going to beat you up do this people were really 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 people uh, um, Nigerians Nigerians who wanted to vote and had issues they got angry and things lot of things fucked up in different areas but we, we were glad that things were able we didn't get so much of uh, of bad stories or news or things like that because we know in some areas though they started late though they finished late though they had spill of us mm -hmm, we could mm -hmm. record we would say that we record 80 percent success so, yeah 80 yeah. percent success when it comes to the polling when it comes to the voting processes and and all of that and then and we have a report here he's saying that the, the national secretary of labor party mr kaya de Abdulu, has called for the urgent arrest and Prosecution of the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Atai Jaga, over the malfunctioned card readers for the weekend's presidential and national election, national assembly elections. You know, he, he said that he made that on, um, in a statement on Sunday and said the election was a contest between the People's Democratic Party and the card readers, and that Jaga should be blamed for deploying the card readers in the face of strong opposition. Now, people, actually, who is the National Secretary of the Labour Party, is saying that mm -hmm. Jada should be arrested for uh, um, still using the card readers, even when he had obvious faults. You know, you remember we it had the testing in uh, in the Senate House. It had the testing, but it failed. He had problems and the president's going to vote he had his problems for over 40 minutes he struggled with the candidate he had to fill uh, um the, that form he had to fill a uh, complaint form yes he had to incidents form. incidents form he had to fill the incidents form and stating that his um um prints his fingerprints could not be read by the card readers you know and uh yeah, that, 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 that was funny he was funny for the president to actually go through that it's absolutely funny and absurd for anyone to to, to call on their arrest or professor atari rojiga because in this case if the card reader can actually identify you there was manual accreditation, right? If I'm not yes, mistaken, yes, yes, there was yes. manual accreditation, and the 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 the, the, the polling day was extended by a day. It should have been um, Saturday alone. It was extended to Sunday. So definitely, if there was a problem with a card reader in a particular polling booth, yeah, provisions okay. made for no, the manual. No, 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 there's manual accreditation. That was what the president did. He tried it for for four or eight times, if I'm not mistaken. It, it the card reader could identify him, and he had to do manual accreditation. Mm -hmm. So. In that case, looking at it from that perspective, this process, this procedure is new. We can't deny that. This is yes. our first attempt at using a attempt, biometric yes. card within an election. So, we're going to give him a thumbs up because it's, it's, it's very successful uh, across, uh, let's say, all For the... For first attempt. It's, it's oh, okay. oh, oh, oh. The first attempt is good. But, uh, yeah, we can't deny that there were technical glitches along the line. But looking at it generally, I think... I could score INEC an 80% because they did well and uh, let's just give them you know, this this chance, it's the first attempt. Maybe subsequently we might think of you know, prosecuting any chairman of, the, of, of INEC, but for now I think it's good and we should forget about finally filing any lawsuit against Professor Atari Rujiga. Really? Okay, not really about filing a lawsuit against him now. Uh, what I believe is that them using the card readers at this particular time, I believe it should have just been used for maybe the gubernatorial election and not the presidential election. Why? That's the question. Why? Because if you look at it, this card reader is the most reliable way of avoiding rigging in this election. Yeah. It's yes, the but let's not forget well, that. Well, I, I agree. It, it, it looks, or let me say, Okay, let me agree with your statement. It's the most reliable way, but in the long run, we couldn't have it used. 
Do you understand? Uh, yeah, yeah. So what, 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 say if what, the, if um if um the hundred percent reliable reliability yeah. index now yeah. has been on the card, the card reader, yeah. I yeah. tell you, um the election would have been void. Yeah, the, the reason why I actually said that it's simple because number one, you have to have your PVC before you appear. Yeah. yeah before the polling go. So that a, means one, as, one, get, one aspect you, of it has you, 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 get, you get what I'm saying. So if even if you have the PVC and the cargo that is, is unable to identify you, then you can go for the manual accreditation. But if there's no cargo there, if there's no PVC, so what's the essence there? Anyone could go there and say, okay, I did register and I want to vote. Mm. You get it out. So in a way, it makes the process very reliable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, it, it makes it reliable, but let's not forget that people have, people have also gone beyond that. You know, I'll beating uh, um, INEC to it. Yeah, you know, sure. and having their own ways. There's a report here that we have on our Facebook page, which shows uh, um, someone who had about four thousand. PVCs in his possession. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I, I, think, I think that's, 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 that's really, really not good. Yeah, that's a major problem because I, I it's quite sad that uh, the Nigerian government, talking about the present administration, didn't take much more step in looking into this issue of cloning prominent voters' card. Because the alarm was actually raised before the election in Ikeja, where a specified location, okay. Where a group of people were cloning permanent voters card. They raised this alarm yes. that the, the, what's it called, the, the, the Niger, is it Niger National Security Agency, mm -hmm. the, the NSA actually raised that alarm, but everyone thought it was just something, ah, what's the deal, let's forget about that. It's okay. impossible, they can't do that, won't be able to identify it. But from what I'm saying now, if someone is able to clone those cards and if the card you know, refuses to identify that person, that person can go through the manual accreditation. That's what it implies. So, in a way, yeah, there's still so many anomalies. So, that, yeah. that's what we're saying. But in the long run, seriously, looking at an election in Africa, I think the candidate is still the best because I, I, was, watch, I was watching the news and the president. And the president of Malawi okay, was actually interviewed by one of the media houses in Nigeria and he said, okay, we in Malawi, we're going to be observing. Okay, how efficient this card reader is going to be okay, in the entire conduct of the election, and if it's going to be very successful, we might adopt it as well. So, Nigeria is kind of you know, uh, blazing the trail, you know, with regards to using a card reader, biometric card reader for elections, and uh, mm. I think it's, it's, it's really a good one. Yes, it's really a good one, I must say, it is a good one. You know, here, um, Atari Ujaga um, spoke to the public uh, on Sunday. He spoke to the public and he said that um, reading out during, uh, during uh, he had a press briefing. And um, he said the Independent National Electoral Commission wishes to commend Nigerians for their large turnout and peaceful conduct during the national elections held on Saturday, 28 March 2015. The Commission commends Nigeria for the resilience and remarkable understanding they exhibited in the face of these difficulties. We hope that good conduct will continue throughout the post-election period as well. We are pleased that the election went on smoothly in a substantial number of polling units across the country, including the northeast, where the commission was also able to conduct voting for internal, internally disp displaced persons in the three states of Adamawa, Yobe, and Bernu. It is also gratifying to note that the card readers worked as well in the major polling units, even though they were uh, Areas where difficulties um, experience, necess experience necessitated additional guidance by the Commission to allow for manual accredita accreditation of voters, as announced. You know, and, and now he's saying that so far, Oshu, Kebi, Ekiti, Adamawa, Bronu, Jigawa, Anambra, Akwaibum, and Ebony states have reported reverting to manual only accreditation of voters in some polling units. You know, so now just in those states, have they reverted to manual only and they kept the PVCs aside? 
Okay, so people went, uh, kept the PVC aside and picked up the manual, uh, uh, manual accreditation processes and they went on with it because experiencing problems for quite a while will not, doesn't really help. So anyway, he went further to say that as a result of the operational challenges, um, experience, the election could not be concluded in some, uh, in a few polling units and therefore this will uh, this will be concluded okay uh, on Sunday according to reports received so far elections are being concluded uh, um, in 90 polling units in Lagos 90 polling units in Lagos Wow that's that's a huge number we also have 16 polling units in Kebi 25 polling units in Adamawa 6 polling units in uh, uh, in Ninja we have 37 in Yobe 8 in Borno State 37 in Jigawa 13 in Kano, 116 in Taraba, and we have two in the federal capital. They were affected and they, were, they had their elections that uh, on the, the next day, that on Sunday, uh, elections um, also spilled over to the next day. And um, he's saying the collection of results uh, has commenced and is ongoing. and. Um, Results are being collected. The uh, results of the presidential elections are expected at the National Coalition Center in Abuja and to be gotten as at Sunday evening. So we still are waiting, and he's saying that it shall be released. Uh, results will be released on on Monday, and um, he also wants to commend the young men and women of the National Youth Service Corps (NYC) and students who form the bulk of the ad hoc personnel for their bravery and commitment in the face of challenges to ens ensure free, fair and credible elections. Okay then, so, wow, that's from um, Professor Atari Ujega, the INEC chairman. He has made his uh, comment, he gave his thanks and he explained that uh, in some areas there were uh, uh, polling units that had to have their elections again and um, it's quite an old number. Lagos and Taraba, I believe, had the highest. I, I want to say had the highest of spillovers to the next day. And uh, I wonder why Taraba had to have that large amount. Taraba is a big state, notwithstanding. Yes, I know. But why did they have to have that big amount? But uh, in Lagos, yes, Lagos has a lot of people. The population of Lagos cannot. Can <laughs> definitely calls for that. Definitely calls for the spillover and um, some technical glitches and all of that. And all right then. And um, people are anxious. People are heightened over the delay of the results. You know, uh, and people are saying that. Um, you know, and this is a report coming in from Enugu. He's saying that uh, a palpable trepidation in the rife in uh, Enugu state over the delay in announcement of results by the INEC um, on the presidential and national assembly elections. But, uh, um, it's saying that um, results um, will be announced and um, results are still being collated. And the results will show who won among the um, former governor of Enugu State, um, Chimaroke Namani, and can candidate of PDP and uh, PDC, the incumbent Senator Gil Naji of the um, People's Democratic Party. You know, um, that's a um, candidate being listed out, and people are anxious to know the results. That's for the senatorial elections, anyway. So, and the president is advising Nigerians to wait patiently for the result. President Goodluck Jonathan has urged Nigerians to exercise patience as they wait for the national, uh, uh, independent national electoral commission to collate and announce results of Saturday's presidential and national e uh, assembly elections. Jonathan Wu is the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the elections he made the call in a post on his Facebook page. Anxiety has been gripping Nigerians over what many saw as a slow pace of the coalition of results across the country with political parties making claims and counterclaims. You know, and all progressive congress has issued a statement alleging that Jonathan's administration was planning to manipulate results. That's why they have the delay. Jonathan, however, advised Nigerians to wait patiently for the results the same way they waited patiently to vote on Saturday. He urged them not to embark on any act that could lead to breakdown of law and order. That's what the president is saying. That as much as you waited patiently to vote, you can also still wait patiently to get the results of 
the elections you can wait patiently and um and let's not let's not forget that um and that there's a speculation that um results have been released from various parts of the country but results from the south south and the south east and not and the east and uh, the eastern states are not forthcoming because people claim that um, uh, some rigging processes are happening but um let's not forget that rigging is also possible even though it is uh, uh, um is uh, is not allowed it's against the law and um an electoral officer was caught in taraba over tw 20 million naira bribe 20 million naira bribe the electoral officer in charge of eb local government area taraba state is now in police custody for allegedly collecting the sum of 20 million naira from a house of representative candidate to influence the results of the last saturday presidential and national assembly elections in his favor the electoral officer whose name was given as asana abubaka was alleged to have struck a deal with a city member of the house of representatives to hand over the ballot papers for royal two word to give the candidate an edge over his challenger confirming the arrest the police um public relations officer um, said that Einek, uh, the INEC official would have been killed by a grieved youth but, the, but for the timely um, arrival of the police commander at the scene and he says here that uh, um, explaining further he said that um, during the elections voters in the area di di discovered that ballot papers meant for the House of Representatives were being tampered with and uh, the angry youth suspecting foul play swooped on electoral on the electoral officer and almost lynched him to death before the police came to his rescue wow that's the good thing about it people are vigilant people are observant you know on a normal day people just come vote what's my own let me just go back to my house but people were observant as it is and they noticed that okay this is house of reps the ballot papers for the house of reps is being tampered with and they said oh, we are suspecting something and that was how they pounced on him and discovered that he had uh, been um, passing across ballon papers to um, a sitting member of the house to help uh, um, him have um, an edge over, over his opposition oh well that's sad yeah it's absolutely sad I'm so glad that uh, that bad shit was actually caught. Yes, the bad ship was caught. It, it's, it, it's, really, it's really, very sad to realize that an, an, an INEC member is actually involving himself in that. The thing is, this election is about the future of all Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And since Nigerians have actually realized that this is their future, they are ready to embrace it, they are ready to protect it, and they are ready to monitor it. So, if you was actually thinking that, okay, uh, this is a 2011 where uh, there is no PVC, where, where there is no, um, I put it, I put there is no uh, sort of heightened, you know, uh, awareness about the electoral process in, in Nigeria, mm -hmm. where anyone could just take the original ballot box, a particular corner, stuff it with, with uh, fake, you know, ballot papers and uh, go scot free. But this time around, I think it's just way behind reality. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are vigilant now and they're ready to protect yes. their votes. And uh, I think that guy will face the brunt of the law. And uh, I'm actually so pleased he was caught. Because if you look at it, people stood in, 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 in the burning sun for hours just to cast their vote. People actually, you know, sacrifice so much to get there. And you think you can actually manipulate the vote, you're wasting your time. I'm so glad it was caught. I'm so glad the, 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 the vote is actually, you know, raised that an alarm or over that. Yes. And I'm so glad, you know, he's in the police custody. Yeah, I, and I'm also glad that he wasn't lynched. Yeah, I'm also glad it wasn't no lynched. jungle justice. No so jungle that. justice. And um though it's good, it's good that, um we have the gubernatorial elections coming up in uh, um April um April eleventh. So we have to be vigilant if you notice anything going wrong, if you notice ask questions, raise the lamb, gather people, let's go find out what this is. That doesn't mean you should be violent, find out what's going on, know the due processes, know what's going on. If anything is you any you suspect one form of power play or the other you raise the alarm okay and you can also send your reports whatsoever you can send your reports to um news agencies or um media outfits okay then and we have people still still 
making uh, um, raising dust over the I am um, card readers people are still um, reacting to it and he's saying here I have a report saying here that more Nigerians have reacted to the alleged failure of the card readers in some parts of the country during the presidential and national assembly election held um, over the weekend blaming INEC uh, uh, um, for the situation, Governor Moazu Babagida Ali of Niger State challenged INEC to avail the Nigerian public the identities of the suppliers of your equipment as well as the cost of the contracts. Speaking to newsmen in his residence in Mina, um, he, he, the state capital in the state capital shortly after casting his vote, Ali Yuru was a senatorial candidate of the ruling um, People's um, Democratic Party for the Northeast in the elections. Noted that um, making those details available to the public would enable them inform uh, uh, make informed judgment about the workability and or otherwise of the equipment. Oh, wow. And this is in preparation for next, um, ne the next government, the com coming gubernatorial elections. Yeah, maybe. exactly. I, I would say in a way I share the same sentiment with uh, uh, Alaji uh, Babagida Muazu. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the thing is, at this point, no one cares about who manufactured the the the, the, the card readers or all the PPC. What we have to now is to get the result of the election <laughs> and ensure that, you know, if after the announcement of the election, there shouldn't be any sort of values. Everyone should just accept the result and move on. Maybe subsequently they might be thinking about that, but for now, that is totally not important. All right then. So as we got the results, uh, like no doubt we have results coming out everywhere. People claiming this, people claiming that. Yes, people I claim saw something yesterday that was so shocking, and I had to show members of my family. I said, "Okay, this is what is happening right now." When you see so so person, like, ah, ah, is that the real thing? Did you hear anything from that's the thing? Did you see see so many things are going. So many right results now. are. I don't know which one is which. And, and that's why I'm so glad that uh, uh, Professor Perujek actually made a press conference and want the social yes. media for, for disseminating fake results. Yes, that's because it. Because this would be a breeding ground for violence. Yes, it because is. You've actually given the, the perception of certain results in, 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 the, in the minds of certain people. Mm -hmm. And once, you know, at the end of the day, certain results go against what they've already known, mm -hmm. violence will definitely come up. So, play with the social media, guys. Please and please and please. It is not your duty to publish any result. Mm. Your duty is to report what you've said at the public center and uh, leave the, the announcement of result for inex. Simple. Yes, lots of people. I've been coming up with. Lo I I saw a lot of result. Seventy percent, twenty percent for one party, uh, and seventy uh, eighty percent for another party. And it made me wonder: Are there just two parties in this country? Why would you? Why would you release the result saying one party had sixty-five percent, another party had thirty-five percent? What's the meaning of that? <laughs> well, really, just because these two parties are the major parties, in and the and country. we just reeled that out. You, you, you get, you get it for all the six states. I, I, I'm so I'm so glad it was actually uh, able to identify that because in the first place there were other political parties. We have the what's it called the Labour Party. We have the Koa, we have because Nigeria it seems it, it just seems as if okay we have just two parties. Yes, fourteen, 14 parties for heaven's sake. Yes, no, fourteen. We have other parties. Forty presidential candidates. Fourteen. We, we we're practicing a multi party system. Okay, but we now it looks like a dual party exactly, system. Exactly. Although we have two dominant political parties, but if you actually bring it up the result you know, based on the fact that just the two major political parties are sharing the total percentage of votes then every normal thinking person would know that this result, I mean, that the result is fake. Just like Ine said, you just can have 100 percent based on two political parties. Yes. It doesn't make any sense. You would know definitely it's fake. And now I'm reading the reports that INEC is saying, INEC disowns election results in social media. INEC is saying it out that they are disowning the election results in social media. It's not from them, so do not take it. Anything you see on the social media now is not from INEC. The presidency and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, urge Nigerians to disregard election results being published in the social media, describing the results as fake. 
INEC chairman Professor Atayu Jaga said the media would be part of the results coalition scheduled to begin at 12 noon today. Um, the venue of the coalition, according to Jaga, is the International Conference Center in Abuja. Speaking at a media briefing in Abuja, he explained that while it is not an offense for Nigerians to share scores by contestants amongst themselves as obtained during coalition at the state level, it is an offense to use such scores to declare winner of the elections. His words, in his words, I know that the presidential elections result in a kitty has been collated and normally when these results are collated, the observers and everybody who is there will know the result. But what the law prohibits is for people to begin to announce a winner. If you know which candidate got the number of votes in a kitty and you share it, it is not a problem. Where the problem emerges is where you begin to declare a winner by virtue of number of votes you got. So people have to be very careful of making projections or declaring candidates as winners based on results they have received. It is only INEC that is supposed to collect the information they got and then make a final declaration. By the time you start getting some results and make some projections and announce who the winner is, obviously you are falling foul of the provisions of the law. People have to be very careful about this. It's a fact that as I speak with you, very few states have collated results for the presidential elections. End of quote. Anything that the results of um, the elections would be made public today, Jaga further explains that the 48-hour timeline as promised by the commission started counting from Saturday evening where the elections were concluded and not from Saturday morning when the process began. He said in 2011, the National Electoral Commission was able to declare the presidential election result in 48 hours and would have been working and we have been working as seriously to be able to uh, uh, to beat that record. So what we are working hard to do this time is to be able to declare the results within 48 hour, hours or much less than the period we did in 2011. Okay, he also went for that to say that he is debunking insinuations that the commission is under pressure to declare the election inconclusive, saying that we are not under any pressure to declare the, um, the election, the result inconclusive. At any rate, we will be interested in declaring, we will, in any, at any rate, we will be interested in declaring the election inconclusive. Admitting that the card of card readers were less perfect, he however noted that the step had added efficiency to the elections. Yes, it mo added efficiency to the elections. No doubt, though it had its difficulties, though it had its difficulties, and he um, is saying right now that just about 0.25% malfunctioned out of the 150 card readers. And he's saying that out of that, that is just about 374 out of the 150,000 card readers that malfunctioned. So he's saying that that's just representing 0.25%. So, end of all of this is that INEC is saying that any results that you see, um, results on the social media, wherever, that is not from them, that's not from the official uh, uh, um, counting or coalition center, which is the International Conference Center in Abuja, that you should, should not, should not hold on to it as the result of the elections. I, I think that's the best thing, because, uh, you know, like I said, this, how would I put it, unauthorized, you know, the publishing of results in the social media is a breeding ground for violence. Mm -hmm. So you're be passing across the wrong impression about the results of this election. Yes. And funny enough, s majority of people truly don't know how this and I mean how these results are, are, are collected eventually. People think it's just all about the number of votes. You know, in a particular state, and uh, all the number of votes will be merged together. Mm -hmm. They have a sum total. Absolutely not. The result will not be determined that way. Mm. It is by the states. We have 36 states in this in, the, in this nation. Plus, uh, yeah, plus Abuja, right? Mm. Federal capital territory, making it 37. And 
if a particular candidate is able to get two thirds, if he's about, to, if he's able to win two thirds of the entire states in Nigeria, then he will be declared the winner. It's as simple as that. So even if in a particular state you're having uh, a particular uh, 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 political uh, candidate having like uh, out of about, let's say, um, 20,000, the person is having like 15,000, while the other is having even less than 5,000, that is just a state. So, the not the whole country. So, you get it now. So, okay. if it's just the number. Uh, in places just like Lagos, yeah. Lagos has this particular no, number. Uh, who who no, 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 no. is going to win? It's not all about the number. Oh, the okay. thing is, it's all about the state. If a, if, if a particular candidate is able to have an advantage of another candidate with just a single vote in the state, mm -hmm. that candidate has won that state. That's how it is counted. Yeah, that's, that's just it anyway. And, um,. Let's not forget that um, there were violence and killings and all of that um, in some parts of the country, in some states. And he's saying that um, one person was, has been murdered in Ikeru in Ifelodo local government in Mushroom State in the early hours of um, Saturday morning, according to reports. Hoodlums invaded the area and killed Yomi Ademola, a PDP member, after gunfire broke out. Residents of the area were said to have been awoken by the sound of gunshots around 4:45 a.m. The victim allegedly, a uh, uh, victim is alleged to have recently defected from APC to the PDP. This was on Saturday morning, just before the elections started, and uh, there were gunshots and all of that. Still on violence and everything. We also have reports um, from River States and the killings of soldiers and um, other people. I, I, I got to find out that uh, it was quite interesting that the governor of River State refused to cast his vote. Did you hear about that? Well, I, I didn't hear about that. I, I, yes, I, 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 I got to hear about that and it was serious and, and I was It was probably just thinking for his safety, you may never know And at the end of the day he was also asking for the uh, results sheets I think that was quite at the beginning of the um, the accreditation itself He was like, okay, where are the uh, results sheets? I want to see them and they were like, why, why, for what reason? Just cast your vote and then leave But he was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that I'm not No, going no, no, to me that is unconstitutional The governor has no right to demand, okay, the results sheets Because, come on, if he wants to get access to the results sheets They should become uh, an, an INEC ad hoc Stop for member if he okay. truly really wants to. All right. So it's, all, it's not part of them, and he has no business there. All he has to do is to cast his vote and walk out of there. And if he feels like he wants to protect his vote, he can hang around and see if his vote is going to become this as simple as that. Okay, man. So now uh, we have um, reports coming in, and it says three persons and a soldier have been reportedly killed as elections turned out violent in River State, South South Nigeria, on Saturday. One was killed with a machete in Ozoha and um, Ikiri, local government area. Another person was allegedly shot by a soldier at a low day Lemo was three. With it too, and there was also a report and that an Ogoni Ogoni youth, um, known as Mr. Saturday in Ki, in Kirine, was killed at a uh, pity um, in Thai local government area. Uh, you know, and uh, Brigadier ACN, ACN of two brigade has confirmed the killing of a soldier at the Wing Pair area, Ward 9 in Obio Akwa local government. He told Governor uh, um, Chibu K and Mechi that his soldier was killed, one of his soldiers was killed. And um, there were reported cases of shooting in Boguma, Asari to local government. Houses were reportedly burned in Bera and Senator Abe's community in um, Gokana, local government area. So now he's saying that, however, PM, APC in Rivers has decried the killing of his members and different and different choices differentizing them in various parts of the state he, he also went to say that armed military armed militants working for the people's democratic parties people democratic party have intensified their killing of apc members scores have already been killed and several others marked for elimination 
Oh, wow, these are claims that um, people have been targeted to be killed and people have already been killed, saying scores of people have been killed. River State has been so hot ever since the beginning of this year uh, or late last year too. River State has been so hot and I want to s and, I, and I would say that River State um, recorded the highest um, number of killings, I would say. Uh, um, during these elections, during campaigning, during all of that, that even the, the health sector of the state had to decry that they've been having too many cases of electoral violence, you know, having to attend to so many health cases, you know, the death rates and the injuries, the gun wounds and machete wounds, you know, and all of that. And now we have these killings during the elections and people do not even feel safe. And let's not forget that there have been also the burning and there was also a burning, and the INEC office was also burnt down in the River State also. So uh, the violence in River State is really escalating and we hope for peace. We really, really do hope for peace. And we have to run off the program which is affecting, wow, it's, uh, it's been, a, it's been a, a long, long segment of having to talk about the elections, giving our opinion and our suggestions to all of this, you know, and how we saw it. According to the polling unit we visited and according to where we went to and according to reports on the news and everywhere around and we talked about the election today. We are going to come back tomorrow still talking about the elections and I'm sure you would not you would not not want to miss that. Okay, I want to say thank you to my colleagues here and the friends and uh, 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 in the studio. Thank you so much for make, being a part of the program today. Yeah, it's a thank pleasure, you. It's a pleasure. All right, so you're gonna we're gonna have a date tomorrow. Still talking about the elections, and uh, by then we are sure that we are gonna have a lot, a lot to talk about. So don't make it a date with us tomorrow, uh, same time as we talk elections. Don't go nowhere. Stay tuned to Radio Global. about us Cause all they really want to do is just to get in touch with me One Naira? What is One Naira? I can send SMSs as low as One Naira per SMS at www.smsafricang.com Tell me something I just need to buy SMS Africa Scratch Dad, register for free at www.smsafricang.com Click on the buy SMS and enter the PIN number, click on add, then SMS credits will be added to my balance and I can send as many messages as I want to multiple contacts and I get fast deliveries within seconds and I can schedule my messages for daily and for weekly. For more inquiries, visit www. That's smsafricang.com We handle social events like weddings, birthdays, anniversaries and also corporate events like products launch, networking events, annual general meetings and governmental events. It doesn't end there. We also do budget management, gifts management, vendor management, attendance management, turnkey management, destination management, concepts and theme development. Do you know who we are? We are Madiba Events Limited. Do you want to organize a stress-free event and you require an accurate delivery? Then what are you waiting for? Contact us today at our corporate office. 28B Ajinaku Street, Awusia Estate. Salvation Bus Stop, Okpebi, Ikeja, Lagos. Telephone 0909-375-1330 or 0802-757-2166. Follow us on our online platforms, facebook.com slash Madiba Events. Our Twitter handle, at Madiba Events. Or you can visit our website on www.madibaevents.com. At Madiba Events. We give you the honor you deserve. Hey, 
Why is this child always crying? He cried all through the night and he's still crying again. What's wrong with him? I don't know. I've changed his diapers four times already this morning. He's uncomfortable and I don't know what it is. I'm really disturbed. Got baby issues? You want to know the best way to take care of your baby? Listen to the Happy Baby Show on Radio Global for new and old parents and from parents to be. Join me in on Radio Global at 12.30 p.m. every Thursday and we will be talking baby. Hi, my name is Harland Kasten from Ukraine and I am on Radio Global with Lucky Elaid Watts. Please don't go anyway, stay with us. <laughs> 